Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here to go over some basics of spherical coordinates for you, some basic conversions as well, and then setting up and evaluating a few examples of triple integrals in spherical coordinates. So in our 3D rectangular space in R3 we have x, y, and z axes, those are our variables in rectangular coordinates. In spherical coordinates we have variables rho, phi, and theta. I know this looks like a P, but it's actually the Greek letter rho. So our variable rho tells the distance some point is from the origin in 3D space. Remember that r is actually the distance out from the z-axis here. Rho is actually the distance from the origin itself to the point. Phi is the angle measured downward from the positive z-axis. So I have my positive z-axis here. If this is my point, then this angle measured downward from the positive z-axis is our phi. And theta is the usual polar angle measured in the xy plane counterclockwise if you're looking from above. So let's look at some formulas that will help us convert from rectangular to spherical or from polar to spherical, etc. So if I take my vertical component here for my point Z and I sort of copy it onto the positive Z axis so we'd have that amount of vertical stuff going up. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my R and also paste it out from the Z axis as well. So thinking about a rectangle that we have here, I get some sort of a right triangle, you can imagine, and it has R and it has Z and it has rho for the sides. And then this angle here is phi that is measured out from the positive Z axis. So the first thing we want to think about is this point, we want to think about it like we think of in polar, a point being on a circle. Think about this point in spherical coordinates being on a sphere that is centered at the origin, at 0, 0, 0. So if that's the case, then we know that the equation for a sphere is going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals the radius squared. And if that's on the sphere, then the radius of our sphere is just going to be rho here, right? So we get x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals rho squared from just the basic equation of a sphere centered at the origin. So beyond the basic equation of the sphere, let's say we want to get some other conversions that we have. Let's use our right triangle where z and r and rho are our sides and we have phi as an angle in here. So let's just say take the cosine of phi, right? That would relate some of the sides. Remember that cosine of an angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So for phi being here, the adjacent side would be z and the hypotenuse would be rho, so our cosine of phi is going to be z over rho. And if I multiply both sides by rho, multiply rho to the other side, that will give us that rho cosine of phi is equal to z. So that gives us a nice little conversion there for z. We can convert z into spherical coordinates doing that. Converting x and y, we first want to then maybe think about how we converted x, y before. Remember that x and y in polar were r cosine theta and r sine theta. Now r is not really something that we have in here, so I'll need to replace the r. It's not part of my system of rho and phi and theta. We do have theta, however. So looking at our triangle again, let's go back and maybe figure out what is the sine of phi. So thinking about sine of phi in the same triangle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse in a right triangle. So if phi is here, the opposite would be r, hypotenuse rho. So sine of phi is going to be r over rho. If we do the same thing, multiply both sides by rho again, then we'll get that rho sine phi is a replacement for r. So if I take that and I put it into my polar equations for x and y, those r's become rho sine phi. So we get x is rho sine phi cosine theta and y is rho sine phi sine theta. So we have some nice conversions there for x and y and z now and our basic equation for the sphere. As we're working toward triple integrals in spherical coordinates, we'll want to build the unit of volume so we know what to tack on to the end of our triple integral. Remember, in rectangular coordinates, we had a box that was just what we think of as almost like a cube type object where it was length times width times height, giving us the volume of that box. Here you'll notice that our box is a bit rounded in much the same way that our polar unit of area, the box that is part of uh, what looks like a radar maybe in polar coordinates was rounded a bit. So here not only do we have a rounded box like we do in polar coordinates, 
but it is also coming out like a slice of a wedge from the pole as well. So we have this sort of rounded shape of a box in spherical coordinates, and that's going to be our unit of volume. We're not going to take a ton of time doing the full commercial on where the formula for the unit of volume for the spherical box comes from in this video. You can certainly refer to basically any calculus textbook. Lots of resources on the internet will just tell you where this comes from if you really want to dig deep into this. So we're going to basically say in a short way of description that our length of the box is going to be called some delta rho, some coming out from the origin. Basically, the length of the box in the phi direction is going to be rho times delta phi, and the length of the box in the theta direction is going to be rho sine phi delta theta. And if you want more details, you can certainly refer to some sort of written source to dig through why all these are. So basically, we have that our unit of volume is going to be delta rho times rho delta phi times rho sine phi delta theta. And that's a lot, right? Let's go ahead and look at simplifying some things here. You'll notice I have a rho and I have another rho. So I actually have a rho squared. I also have a sine phi and then everything else is delta something, right? So I have a rho times a rho, I have a sine phi, and then I have delta rho, delta phi, and delta theta. So we really get rho squared sine phi delta rho delta phi delta theta. And again, if you want to refer to a text, uh, some written source on the nitty gritty of where this all comes from, uh, we encourage you to do that. So think about as this box gets really, really small and we cram more of them into our domain, into our 3D region to approximate the volume, then this unit of volume becomes very microscopic the more we fit in there. And so we get our unit of volume dv in spherical coordinates is actually going to be rho square sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Okay, so if you are asked to calculate the volume of some region, you will figure out your bounds for your triple integral, and this will be your unit of volume that you use at the end of your triple integral. So if we're calculating volume, we'll just have triple integral rho square sine phi d rho d phi d theta. If we're calculating mass, we'll have that triple integral over the same region with that unit of volume, but we'll also be integrating some density function to find the mass. Let's look at one of these mass examples right off the bat. Here we want to find the mass of a sphere of radius 4. It's centered at the origin. Its density function in terms of rho and phi and theta is 5 minus rho. So if we want to find the mass, we'll need a triple integral. So we'll go ahead and set that up. And inside of our integral, we will need the density function. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my function 5 minus rho. And my dv needs to go on the end of the function. That gives me the volume there. So I have rho square sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Now, if we're integrating in this order, we would integrate d rho first. And so that means that I need to fix some theta and some phi and draw through the region in the rho direction. In order to, let's think about this outer idea first, fix some theta. That means I just need to turn and orient myself some direction in the xy plane rotating this way. So if I do that and then slice through the sphere, exactly through the center there, well, then I think that's going to give us some sort of a circle, right? If we slice exactly through the center, so if I cut through the middle, I'll get something that looks like that. And then think about fixing some phi. So measuring from the positive z axis downward a bit, let's just pick this phi. So if I think going out this way, and this is phi here, so I've picked a direction, theta direction, to slice through the very center of this, and now I've chosen a direction downward from the z-axis, and I want to think about my row bounds. So if I start at 0, 0, which is a row of 0, distance from the origin 0, and I go all the way out to the edge of this, this point here will be my upper bound for rho, the farthest distance out from the origin I am in the sphere. Well, the sphere is distance for everywhere from the origin. So this is going to be a radius of four here. So I have rho being zero at the pole. I have rho being four on the surface of the sphere. So our bounds for being in the sphere are from zero to four. Next, we'll need phi bounds. So think about how far down from z do I want to go to get my sphere? Well, let's see. I want to go all the way down, right? If this is phi equals zero up here, 
and I want to travel all the way downward, then that means that I'm needing to go all the way down to phi equals pi. So we're going to go from the top all the way down to the bottom of the sphere. And then what I'll need to do is go all the way around the sphere as well to get all of the volume. So in terms of theta, we'll also need to go from zero to two pi. So now we have our integral. We're going to go ahead and integrate this. Um, much like we did with polar and with cylindrical, we have a rho squared here, much like we had an r in our r d r d theta. We'll need to distribute that maybe before we start integrating. So let's go ahead and distribute that. So we'll say from 0 to 2 pi, and from 0 to pi, 0 to 4. Distributing my row squared, we'll have 5 row squared minus row cubed. We'll still have sine phi, and we'll have d rho, d phi, d theta. All right, so let's give ourselves some room here. And if we integrate d rho first, so we'll have integral 0 to 2 pi, integral 0 to pi, We'll have power rules here. We'll get a row cubed over 3, so we'll get 5 thirds row cubed. Minus here we'll get 1 fourth row to the 4. We still have sine phi, d phi, d theta. And we'll be evaluating our bounds 0 to 4 with what we have. So we have 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi. And plugging in 4, we will get 5 thirds times 4 cubed would be times 64 minus rho to the 4, so it would be 4 to the 4, divided by a 4, which would be really 4 cubed, so that's 64 there. And then we still have sine of phi d phi d theta. All right, so let's do some simplifying here. So 5 times 64, so that'll be 320 over 3 here, minus if we think of this as 64 over 1 and get a common denominator, that would be 192 over 3. So let's go ahead and combine that. So I'll have integral 0 to 2 pi, integral 0 to pi, and then if we take 320 minus 192, that will give us 128 over 3. We also still have our sine phi now, and we'll be integrating that d phi d theta. Okay, let's go ahead and continue then. So we'll do our next integral. We'll integrate d phi next. So we have 0 to 2 pi. Integrating 128 over 3 sine phi d phi, the antiderivative here would be negative cosine phi. So we actually get negative 128 over 3 cosine of phi. Evaluated now from 0 to pi. And we'll have to also integrate d theta after that. OK, let's plug in our bounds. So keep the 0 to 2 pi. OK, so we have negative 128 over 3 times cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1 minus, and then cosine of 0 is going to give us 1. Get that there, and then we'll have to integrate d theta. Now I get a negative 2 in here, and then negative 2 times 128, also negative. That's going to give us 256 on the top, so we'll have 0 to 2 pi, 256 over 3. And we'll integrate that d theta and be done. So if we integrate 256 over 3 d theta, that just gives us 256 over 3 theta. And evaluate from 0 to 2 pi. If I plug in 2 pi, 2 times 256 gives us 512 pi over 3. And if I plug in 0, minus 0 wouldn't change that. So we get a mass for the sphere without listing units of 512 pi over 3. Let's look at our next example here. We just want to find the volume inside the cone of phi equals pi over 3 and inside the sphere rho equals 6. So you can see the top piece here, I've got my picture. This is the piece of the sphere rho equals 6. That's our top component here. And my cone is phi equals pi over 3. So you can think about going down from here, that angle is pi over 3. 
and going out from the origin to the surface here on the sphere, that is a radius of six. So that's what we've got there. What I'll want to do is set up my triple integral. It's just volume, so I don't need a function inside of it. So we'll set up our triple integral with this dv here, and then we'll need to choose our bounds. We're going to start by choosing our bounds, thinking about slicing through in a particular theta direction like we did before. So I want to just use this kind of cross section of slicing right through the middle of the, you know, the cone is on the bottom and the sphere is on the top. This is what we would get as a two dimensional cross section, just slicing through the very center of this through the Z axis. So but let's go ahead and set up our triple integral and put in our DV. So we'll have triple integral there and then we'll have rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta and if I just fix some theta then I get this picture now I also need to fix some phi so I just pick a direction let's say this direction and I cut through in the row direction so that means going from the origin outward right so the question is, what are my bounds for rho? Well, this is when rho is zero, and this point out here is the radius of the sphere, because I'm ending up on the sphere, and that's a radius of six, right? So we go from zero out to six in the rho direction. Now, what are my bounds in the phi direction? This is not like the sphere where we went all the way from the top down to the bottom. We only want to go from here down to here, right? This is where phi is equal to zero, and measuring downward from the z-axis, my angle, then this angle is actually the cone, right? This is actually at pi over three. So I want to go from an angle of zero and then pi over three downward from that. So we'll say from zero to pi over three, or phi. And theta, I do want the entire rotation, right? I want all the way around 360 degrees, this object. So from zero to two pi, in terms of theta revolving in the xy plane. Okay, so this is our triple integral in spherical coordinates that represents this volume between these two things. If we go ahead and do our inner integral, so we'll say zero to two pi and zero to pi over three and keep those. Integrating rho squared, we would get rho cubed over three sine phi. Remember, sine phi is just a constant if we're integrating d rho. And we'll put in our bounds at 0 to 6 for rho. Now, we'll still have d phi and d theta, of course, after we plug in our bounds. Let's go ahead and do that, though. Evaluating, so we'll have these. I plug in 6. 6 cubed is going to be 216, and then 216 divided by 3 is actually going to give us 72 sine of phi and if i plug in zero i'd get zero sine of phi so that's nothing so we'll integrate that d phi and then d theta will still be after that so we'll keep our zero to two pi and now do our middle integral here we'll do the d phi part so integrating this with respect to phi the antiderivative of sine phi is negative cosine phi so we'll get negative 72 cosine of phi and we'll evaluate that from zero to pi over three. Saving our d theta for the end. So we will have zero to two pi. And we'll have negative 72 times. Now, cosine of pi over three is a half minus cosine of zero, which is one. So we get a half minus one in there. And then we will integrate lastly d theta now think about what we have. I have a half minus one, so that's negative a half times negative 72. So the negatives are going to make a positive, and half of 72 is 36. So I'm just integrating 36 from 0 to 2 pi d theta. So if I integrate that, then I will get 36 theta. And bounds from 0 to 2 pi, plugging in 2 pi will give us 36 times 2 pi, that's 72 pi. And plugging in 0, we would get minus 0, so our answer here is just going to be 72 pi for this volume. Okay, for our last one here, we're going to find the volume of something a little bit more complicated. We still have a cone, phi equals pi over 3, but now on top I don't have a sphere, I have a plane, z equals 3, a flat 
top here. And we're going to find the volume. Think about we'll need to set up our triple integral. If it's a volume, there will just be dv on the end of it. We won't need a density function in there. And what we'll do first to find our bounds is we'll first fix a theta direction, right? So I will slice through the center of that in some direction and think about fixing that theta. And so we'll get a cross section of our region that looks like this, and then we'll use that to figure out our bounds. So we'll go ahead and say our volume is going to be the triple integral of just simply rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. Are you doing the little dance while you say that? Rho square sine phi d rho d phi d theta. All right, so we've got that down and now I've fixed a theta. I've cut through it and now I also want to fix a phi, right? So I need to fix a phi and draw through in the rho direction. So if I just pick, let's say like this direction, then I would be going through the region this way and I need to figure out my row bounds, right? So I think definitely we can see down here that's at the origin, so that's going to be when row is zero. And now this is not on a sphere, so it's not just some constant here. Um, what I do know, I know that this vertical distance here is three, right? And that's my z for my plane. And I also know that this angle here is phi, right? Whatever I chose, that's phi. So the question is, what is this distance here, right? It's not constant. If it's here, it's smaller than if it's way out here. So the angle that I choose is going to give me something else. So it's not just going to be a constant number, right? But this side of our triangle is going to be our row. So let's look at what we have. We have a right triangle here in my cross section, and I have phi in the triangle, and I know two sides. So I should be able to do some trig and figure this out. Um, I know the adjacent side to phi, and I want to know the hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse is going to be cosine, right? So in other words, the cosine of phi should equal, the adjacent over the hypotenuse would be three over rho. Now, that's great and that's true, but I need this in a row equals, right? If I'm integrating d row, I need this to be a row equals bound. So solving this for rho, I could multiply both sides by rho. I would get rho cosine of phi is equal to 3. And then I would still have to divide both sides by cosine phi, right? So I would do that. And a nicer way maybe to say 3 over cosine phi might actually be to say 3 secant of phi. Okay, so we're going to have row bounds from 0 to 3 secant phi. And next step, we will need our phi bounds. So think about in our picture here, this straight up direction is where phi equals 0. And I want to go all the way out to this phi value. And we know because that's the boundary of the cone, then this is pi over 3 out here. So we're going to integrate from 0 out to pi over 3 down from the z-axis in terms of phi. And now theta, I want the entire cone all the way around. So our entire cone means I need to integrate from 0 to 2 pi in terms of theta. Okay, this is our integral. Let's go ahead and begin this. So we'll have 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi over 3. And integrating the first thing inside here, d rho, so integrating rho squared sine phi, we would get, like we got last time, rho cubed over 3 sine phi. Now that's obviously, that's going to be very common when you do these volumes because you're just going to have a rho squared sine phi and you're going to get this same antiderivative most times. Our bounds are now, though, from 0 to 3 secant of phi. And then later on, we will also integrate d phi and d theta, but we're not worried about that yet. Let's figure out these bounds and how to deal with this. So we have 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi over 3. And if I plug in 3 secant theta and I cube it and then divide by 3, so 3 cubed is going to be 27, but then I would divide by a 3, so I'm actually going to get a 9 in there. I am still going to get a secant cubed though, right? So I'll get secant cubed of phi sine phi. And then if I plug in 0 for rho, I will just get 0 for everything. So nothing there, minus 0. And then we'll have integral d phi d theta. All right, so now I need to figure out how to integrate this in terms of phi. Well, 
secant cubed times sine is not very friendly. So let's look at maybe how to break this up. Secant really goes nicely with tangent, right? Whenever we're doing some sort of identities or u substitutions. So could I make a tangent somehow? And I think what we want to see is if I could pull out and think of this like secant squared phi and pull out one of the secants and think of it as one over cosine of phi. Right, so what I've done is just pulled out one of my three copies of secant and made it one over cosine. Now this is really sine of phi over cosine of phi, right? So this is tangent of phi, and then things are going to be a bit easier to integrate if we think of it in terms of that. So we'll have integral 0 to 2 pi, integral 0 to pi over 3. We will have 9 tangent phi secant squared phi. And that creates a very nice u substitution situation for us, right? So here we will go ahead and say that u is equal to tangent of phi and du is equal to secant squared phi e phi, okay? So let's just look at this piece here. I'm going to leave off for now. I'm going to just sort of draw that this is going to come down here later. Um, I'm going to just work on this. So I have my bounds here, which are not u bounds, so I need to remember that these are phi bounds. Phi from 0 to pi over 3. And I'm integrating actually then 9u du in here. And I'm not going to worry about my d theta yet. I'm just going to keep bringing that down later on. So we will get here u squared over 2, so we'll actually get 9 halves u squared once we integrate this. And remember these are still phi bounds, so don't plug them in yet. That's phi from 0 to pi over 3. Okay, we're going to keep bringing down our integral and our d theta over here. So let's resub u back in terms of phi now. So u was tan theta. So we're going to go ahead and say integral from 0 to 2 pi and we'll say 9 halves u squared would be tangent squared phi. And now that I'm back in terms of phi, I can use regular old 0 and regular old pi over 3. And remember this outer integral is d theta, bringing this down. Okay, so let's plug in our bounds. We'll get integral from 0 to 2 pi. We will have 9 halves. If I take the tangent of pi over 3, that's square root 3. If I square that, that just gives me 3. Minus, if I take the tangent of 0, I get 0. And if I square that, that's still 0. And that's what we get inside of our integral. And let's clean that up and do our d theta. So we will have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 9 halves times 3 is just going to be 27 over 2. And we'll integrate that d theta. So integrating that d theta will give us 27 over 2 theta plugging in our bounds from 0 to 2 pi. If I plug in the 2 pi here, it'll reduce with the 2 nicely and just give us 27 pi. If I plug in 0, we'll get minus 0. So our answer here for this volume under our plane and above our cone is 27 pi units of volume. Okay, everyone, if you are reaching this point in your multiple integration, you're probably pretty close to being done with multiple integrals and the chapter on that in calculus. Good luck to you in all of those integrals. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video.